Welcome to the infernal brotherhood of the scruffy looking nervers. Today I am reading Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi Zero. Though you're over 36,000 years before the Battle of Yavin and the destruction of the first Death Star, eight ancient pyramidal ships called the Thoyor traveled throughout the galaxy, gathering those who were strong in the Force. Warriors, scientists, philosophers, priests, and artisans from many worlds were brought to the planet Tython in the Deep Core. Once on Tython, the ships orbited a ninth larger Thoyor and after a time, dispensed to various regions of the planet. Force-sensitive sentients from many different species who settled on Tython became collectively known as Tythons. <coughs> the Deep Core In the center of the galaxy, in a region 7,000 light years across, the galaxy's oldest stars orbit a massive black hole. The gravitational pull of the black hole on the stars and their close proximity to one another warps space-time within the core, which causes hyperspace lanes to collapse, making hyperspace travel difficult and dangerous. Tython In this era, Tython is a wild and primordial world, rich with the Force. Breathtakingly beautiful, it can also be harsh and dangerous. Naturally occurring Force storms tear at the skies, and fantastic creatures roam the forest jungles. Significant places on Tython. The Rift. A massive, jagged tear in the ground many kilometers wide and deep, this enormous canyon is racked with volcanic and seismic activity, marked with jagged spires and dangerous quicksand pits. It's a wild place far from the cities. Difficult to reach and challenging to navigate once there, the Rift is a place where many Jedi go to hone their survival skills. Within the Rift, is the Abyss of Ru, a mysterious region where pit-spawned beasts are found that are unique to this area. This is where the Jedi find the creatures on which the scientists of Anil Kesh experiment. The Old City The Old City was already abandoned when the Tythons first showed up. Legend says that there is a working hypergate there, but it has never been found. The Silent Desert all sound dies here because of some undiscovered element of sand on the surface. Rocky strata under the sand insulates the caverns below from their effect. Drawing of the Old City by Jedi Master Jake Fenn The Jedi Tythons, who live on the planet Tython itself and are actively engaged in studying and understanding the Force, belong to the Jedi Order. All Jedi are Tythons, but not all descendants of the Tythons are Jedi. The word Jedi is an amalgam of two ancient Dai Bendu words, Je meaning mystic and Dai meaning center, signifying that the Jedi concentrate their study on balance within the mystical energy they call the Force. There are five levels of attainment for the Jedi, Padawan, Journeyer, Ranger, Master and Temple Master Jedi Ranger Hawk Ryo Jedi Code As with the later Jedi and Sith, the Jedi develop their own code. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. There is no fear, there is power. I am the heart of the Force. I am the revealing fire of light. I am the mystery of darkness. In balance with chaos and harmony, immortal in the Force. Jedi Ranger, Rory Fenn, Hawk Ryo's Hunter Class Fighter. Jedi Temples Around every Tho Yor, a temple was founded, each one specializing in some aspect of the study of the Force. While the Jedi might begin their training in one temple as Jedi Journeyers, they were expected to travel to and study the discipline of every other temple. Caliph the Temple of Knowledge. Perched over a Force Nexus, Caliph is where the Jedi gather as a whole when important matters arise. It is here the deci that decisions are made and judgments rendered on behalf of the entire Jedi Order. Kura Ryo, Temple Master of Caliph. Bodhi, the Temple of the Arts. Located in verdant plains near pleasant forests, 
Bodhi is where students and masters study the force as manifested through the arts. Writing, calligraphy, dancing, drawing, sculpture, cooking, music, and theater. The temple master of Bodhi is Jake Fenn. Anil Kesh, the Temple of Science. Here, Jedi scientists delve into science and alchemy. The emphasis is on the theoretical, but the results are often practical and sometimes unpredictable. Anil Kesh straddles the chasm, a gorge so deep that no one has ever found the bottom. Something within the chasm interferes with Jedi senses. The stronger in the force you are, and the deeper you go, the worse the interference becomes. Some Jedi have gone mad trying to learn the chasm's secrets. To the Jedi scientists of Anil Kesh, the chasm represents the Force at its most mysterious, and they will never cease to try to plumb its depths through science and the Force. Mahara Kesh, the Temple of Healing Mahara Kesh is located in the deep ocean, and portions of it extend underwater. Here, the focus is on the healing arts, both with and without the Force. Laser cannons were added to the temple during the Despot War. A mated Selkath couple, Nero and Kale, are the temple masters. Quan Zhang, temple master of Anil Kesh. Vur Tepe, the Forge. This temple lies over the active volcano. An interior dome built over the lava sea utilizes the heat of the magma to power the temple. The emphasis of study on Vur Tepe is on the practical and how the force can be made manifest physically. The saying here is whatever Anel Kesh can imagine, Vur Tepe can make real. Qui Gong Kesh, the Temple of Force Skills. Located within the Silent Desert, the relative silence here aids the Jedi in honing their abilities in mental and sensory uses of the Force. Myarta Sek, a pure-blooded member of the Sith species, is the temple master of Qui-Gon Kesh. A healer trained at Mahara Kesh, she is the stern, wise matriarch of the Sek clan. Seknos Wrath is her grandson, and she's taught him all she knows of healing in the Force. Myarta's ancestors come to Tython aboard a Thoyor millennia before the Sith homeworld of Korriban was conquered by the Dark Lords, who would eventually take the Sith name for their religion. Tem Madog is the temple master of Vur Tepe. The Cathar Jedi a master, is a master weapons maker. He's skilled in forging blades, is unchallenged among the Jedi. It has been claimed that nothing can break Madog's steel. Thor Rath is a Jedi master and Seknos's grandfather. In his youth, Thok was a warrior who was powerful in the Force. Now, in his elder years, he has the skill that the only uh, he has the skill that only the wisdom of age can bring. He is a Jedi who has had the kind of adventures of which Seknos believes he can only dream. Stav Kesh, the Temple of Martial Arts. Here, the Jedi study and hone their abilities in the martial arts and physical force skills, such as the vigorous form called Alchaka, which some of the Jedi jokingly claim was invented just to keep warm at Stav Kesh. Weapons training is also taught here, as Stav Kesh, I'm sorry, Stav Kesh works in harmony with Vor Tepe by testing new weaponry. A Dai Bendu, Thami, is the temple master at Stav Kesh, assisted by Master Tave, a Nogri. Padawan Kesh, the Jedi Academy. At this temple, very young initiates who are strong in the Force are housed and taught until they are ready to be taken as Padawans by Jedi Masters. The Wookiee Roar is the Temple Master of Padawan Kesh. Akar Kesh, the Temple of Balance. Above this towering pinnacle floats the largest of the pyramid ships, the original Tho Yor on Tython, the open-air temple that sits atop the pinnacle is valued as a place for introspective contemplation. Here, the balance of the light and dark sides of the Force is taught. The temple master is Ketu, considered one of the most accomplished of all Jedi masters. Ashla and Bogan Bright Ashla and Dark Bogan are Tython's two moons. 
It was from observing these two celestial bodies that the concept of balance first came to the ancients. To the Jedi, balance within the Force is the most important tenet of the Order. If a Jedi strays too far to the light or to the dark, they are deemed to be out of balance. Those who veer too much to the light are sent to Ashla to contemplate Bogan. Those who walk too far in the dark are sent to Bogan, where they can meditate on Ashla, until they find their way back to balance, if they ever do. Dagon Loke is known to some Jedi as the prisoner of Bogan. Loke was one of those Jedi who could not escape his fascination with what lies in the deep depths of the chasm. It is unknown whether Loke, who was physically scarred from his experience, will ever be allowed to depart Bogan. Jedi Technology Cloud Chaser, one of the many lighter-than-air ships used on Tython in the settled worlds. Terran Glider, short-range atmospheric fighters used on Tython. Jedi Peacemaker Class Cruiser. Used for Jedi travel, including diplomatic missions on interventions and... Um, the Peacemaker is a capable of fast but slower than light speed travel between the planets of the Titan system. The cruisers are armed with laser cannons for defense or for when aggressive diplomacy is necessary. Jedi Ranger Hunter Class Fighter Designed for interplanetary flight, the Hunter Class is heavily armored, the fastest and most maneuverable ships in the system. Jedi often customize these ships. Kratos CRSF-27 Space Freighter Manufactured on Knox by Kratos Shipyards, these sturdy, reliable ships are used on many settled worlds as anything from freighters to warships. They're capable of interplanetary travel as well as being a tested atmospheric vessel. Death Stalker Class Fighter These heavily armored, fast, and maneuverable craft originated within the armies of the despot Queen Hadja. Like the Hunter, the Death Stalker can fly in both open space and in atmospheric conditions. The outcome of a fight between the Death Stalker and a Hunter will depend on the skill of the pilots. The Settled Worlds The descendants of Jedi, who were not Force-sensitive, could not withstand the unsettled nature of the planet Tython, so they migrated outwards from Tython into the Solar System. The planets of the Tython system from the nearest to the star, Tythos, to the farthest. Sunspot and Maltera are two small worlds that rotate in opposite directions around Tythos. Scientists speculate that Maltera is a world that originated within the Tython system and that Sunspot is a rogue planetoid that was captured when it entered the gravitational pull of Tythos. When the two planets pass one another in their near orbits, both worlds experience violent storms. Both are extremely hot, but environment suits make mining operations possible. Knox is a manufacturing world so polluted that its cities must be sheltered under domes supplied with filtered air. Products whose manufacture is hazardous to the environment are made here. Crevecourt is a world pocketed with inactive volcan volcanoes. The atmosphere is so hot and the surface so dry that no unprotected life can survive. But underground is an enormous network of caverns and lakes. Rain falls within the caverns, and strange alien plants thrive in the underworld jungles. Sunspot, Malterra, Knox, Crevcor, Tython, Calamar, Chicaqua, Skagora, Obri, Mar, Fury's Gate. Blue crystals growing on the surface of Crevcor. Tython is a temperate, force strong world ever-changing and beautiful. Calamar is a cosmopolitan world with a very integrated population. Tall spires grace beautiful cities of white metal, the first world colonized after Tython, and one of the most densely populated of the colonized planets is the business and religious hub of the solar system as well. Chicaqua is a world ruled by feudal gangster clans, the Nine Houses, as they are known, are headed by the aristocracy who rule the lands and interests of Chicago. Under the Despot War, these barons, dukes, and earls answered to an overlord called Kral. The Spires of Calamar. Ryu Fortress on Chicago. 
Skagora is temperate, verdant world with huge regions of forests, swamps, and wetlands. Virtually all of the planet's population live in city ships that float above Skagora in order to maintain the planet as a wilderness. Some Wookiees have illegally colonized the forests of this world. No one has challenged their claim. Skagora City Ship Obri and Mar are known as the Giants. These two gaseous giant worlds have several moons each. Obri has three moons, Mar has seven. There are colonies on these moons as well as gas mining facilities within the atmosphere of the planets. Fury's Gate is the outermost world of the Tython system. A single base and scientific outpost is the only sentient presence on this mostly barren world with an observatory that looks outward at the rest of the deep core. It is from here that the Great Sleeper ships were launched with the intention of returning to the rest of the galaxy. There have been several such ships over the millennia, but no word has ever returned about their success or failure, and, in fact, there has been no new influx of scientists to the Tython system since the pyramids came. Baron Valnos Ox Ryo. The middle sibling of three brothers, Valnos never thought he would inherit the title of Baron. Wealthy and from a titled family, he spent his young life in study and travel. Going by the nickname Ox on the settled worlds, he became a champion of the Ryo Syndicate. When his younger brother Hawk introduced him to a fellow Jedi, Korra, the two fell in love, married, and had a child, Tasha. But both Valnos's father and his older brother were killed in the Despot War, leaving Valnos to take on responsibility he felt ill-prepared to handle. The Despot War Twelve years before our story starts, the Despot War Queen Hadja began a process of unifying Chicago and subjugating the aristocracy to her laws with the goal of taking over planets in the Tython system. At this point, the Jedi intervened, siding with the Chicago aristocracy, most of whom opposed Hadja's reign either overtly or secretly. The Despot War was a bloody conflict, killing nobles and soldiers, as well as many Jedi warriors. Following Hadja's death, a weak Kral, or overlord, was elected, one whom the nobles would dominate. Chicago is very political these days, with alliances and treaties made and broken between the various houses as each seeks to defend its own territory and interests. The strongest treaties are those involving marriage between the ruling families. Chicago Warship The Rakata A species of amphibian-like bipeds whose infinity, I'm sorry, infinite empire dominated the galaxy for millennia. Using slaves from many worlds, they built such marvels as the Star Forge, where they would meld technology with the Force to create their war machines. The Rakata also developed a hyperdrive by bending the Force to their will through the dark side. Thousands of years later, civilizations would take the principles of that technology and find other sources of power to create the hyperdrive that would open the galaxy to travel and trade and result in the formation of the Galactic Republic. The Rakata also created Force Sabers, powerful weapons that channeled the dark side of the Force through ebon laboratory-grown crystals into glowing energy blades. The basic principles of this technology would later evolve into the lightsaber used by the Jedi. Rakata Ship The Infinite Empire The Rakatan Infinite Empire reached its zenith 5,000 years before the formation of the Galactic Republic. The Rakata were attracted to and enslaved worlds that were strong in the Force. They found these worlds using Force sensitives known as Force Hounds. Skal Nass is a Predor, a Rakatan overlord, skilled at combat and treachery. He began low and fought his way to the title of Predor. Skal Nass is considered ruthless even for a Rakata. Predor Tulkar, master of the Force Hound known as Zesh. Trill, a Force Hound. Tasha Ryo. A Jedi journeyer, Tasha rarely uses physical weapons, preferring empty hand techniques that use the Force itself for both offense and defense. Steady, calm, and empathetic, I'm sorry, empathic, she uses her ability to sense the pain of others and help them when she can. She's mindful to weigh her options before she acts and tries to understand the possible repercussions of what she does. 
Tasha is the child of Jedi Master Cora Ryo and Chicago crime baron Volnos Ryo. While committed to the Jedi Order and its principles, she is torn between her two parents, wanting to please both. Seknos Wrath A Jedi journeyer and a pure-blood Sith, Seknos can be rowdy and bold. He loves weaponry and has forged three blades in his quest for the perfect weapon. At the forge in Vor Tepe, he can often be found dogging Master Madog's heels. Raised by his maternal grandmother, Miartasek, and his paternal grandfather, Thok Rath, Seknos longs to achieve greatness, holding in his mind the tales of the famous Jedi of the past and present. He wants to be in their company. Shaykota, young, brave, restless, and a bit reckless, she lives up to her Jedi journeyer status. Orphaned when her parents were killed during the Battle of Caliph during the Deep Despot War 12 years ago, Shay has distanced herself from the pain of the deaths by remembering them as heroic figures, frozen in time. Shay has an incessant curiosity. She does not accept anything on blind faith and is not afraid to ask questions, even about that which is considered accepted. She does not question her own powers or abilities because she can feel that they are real. She knows what she can do. Many times she pushes her powers in order to find their limits. Zesh. Zesh is a force hound under the command of Predor Tulkar. When this Rakatan slave sets foot on Tython, he will become a catalyst of events no one could anticipate. Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi number 0 3D printing variant by Jan Dersem, uh, Dersema. Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi Force Storm number 1 variant by Gonzalo Flores. Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi Force Storm number 1 3D printing variant by Jan Dursema. Thank you all for tuning in. We'd like you to like this video. <laughs> We'd like to invite you to like this video. Subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified about our next video. The next series we're going to be reading is the New Republic era. So we are jumping forward 20,000 plus years to just after the film Return of the Jedi. Until the Infernal Brotherhood convenes again, may the Force be with you.